Hey, how's it going, guys? It's your boy, son, TJ, here to review the God of High School episodes 10 and 11. And I'm um, sorry if I've been, um, I haven't been uploading as much. I've been mostly just kind of busy with school stuff, doctor stuff, and everything like that. But, so, I, I'm going to, like, <laughs> so, I have all the names listed here, right? So, I won't mess up the names here. But um, I'm currently, like, re-watching these episodes. So, if I, it's, like, it's like a weird cut, but I just finished re-watching episode 10. And, yeah, what mostly is about... Well, all this is about is pretty much the battle of Jin Mori versus Park Epio, if I think. I'm just going to call him Epio. And yeah, and there's like a, there's a few things that goes on with it. I'm kind of glad that I've been doing this whole double um, episode review because if you saw episode 10 without seeing episode 11, it's kind of hard to fully review it because let's just get down to it. So episode 10, you start off with, um, we got Han versus... Um, if you have Han versus uh, Park Singwa, I'm just gonna call her Singwa because everyone's a lot of people have the name Park in this show. If you haven't noticed, uh, if you if you um, if you read the the webtoon or anything like that, I don't I, don't, I haven't read it, but there's a lot of people named Park when I was looking up all these names. But um, uh, uh, Singwa is able to like land a hit on Han's ear that makes him like kind of unbalanced, and and pretty much um, you have Epio telling her that if you're able to do that, you could win. But Han was able to survive the hit and he's able to like actually beat Singwa, right? Now, it's a big character development for this episode. I'm kind of getting out of order here, but it's a big character development for Epio as a character because when he was growing up, he had this friend. He has like a bunch of friends. He had this one friend who fought the shark dude, which was um, Jigal. And Jigal, like even though she was beaten, he broke her leg. So he's really worried when Par, uh, when Singwa is fighting Han, that Han would do the same or something bad would happen to her, uh, happen to her, right? And Han beats her, and like we have this moment where the, the chick who broke her leg, she comes back in a wheelchair, talking about how like Epio, you need to fight for yourself, not being so worried about your friends, like you know, kind of like the formula they've been doing with a lot of these characters to give them like a quick background story. Um, and with the characters they really care about, they add a little bit more context, but it's all leading towards the fight where um, you have Jin Mori versus Epio. And before that, like even before that, we see um, we get some more like background. What happened with like, for example, we have Judge P. Judge P is the is the female with the blue hair. She's like seen in danger, and she got knocked out by like the the, the leader of the Knox group, which is Sang uh, Mendok. Sang, I'm just gonna call him Sang. And we see Sang has beef with um, if you don't know the guy's name, I keep calling him guy with a scar and on, on his forehead when I keep saying Chin for some reason. The, the guy with a scar on his on his forehead, his name is um, uh, <laughs> Park Mujin. So I'm just gonna call him Mujin because there's too many parks in this in this, this naming here. But yeah, Park Mujin and um, and saying both have like this fight that takes on pretty much the entire episode. And it's not really even a fight. It's kind of like this thing where like um saying summons the god sword that took out um Jin uh uh Jin Taijin which is uh Jin's grandpa um it's like this giant sword that comes in and it seems like um it's <laughs> oh god I got all these names listed but yeah I'm getting confused because I'm trying to like talk review and, and say all these names at the same time but um uh, Park Mujin is able to stop it with his little like like uh, his, like his like cross thing on his hand, but then like the Nox like cult summons like God, which again I feel like that's kind of a vague because like if this character's God, how do they even keep up with this character, right? But regardless, this like black figure comes in and starts pushing the sword down even more, which Mujin can't really handle. Then the Rex, uh, then the rest of the judges in like the six, because if you don't if you don't remember, um, Park Mujin is a part of the six, and like one more guy that comes in who's part of six. His name, if I have it listed here, his name's like CEO Hang uh, Ring. This guy who like drinks a lot. And it has like this weird scene where like the animation is incredible. Don't go wrong, the animation is incredible. Uh, things are rising, things are happening. But like, I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> like, this guy comes in, he starts shooting bullets, starts shooting arrows, starts saying he has all bunch of national treasures. It's like, it's this epic animation of like people hitting drums. I'm just like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, again, the pacing is so fast, you know that this will be explained a lot more if this was, like, the webtoon, right? But, like, I'm watching the anime, I don't know what's happening. I just know there's a lot of cool shit happening, right? But while that's all going on in the background, you know, they're talking about, you know, they need to summon the key and everything, which is explained more in episode 11. But you have the fight between Jin Mori and Epio. And um, Epio is pretty much saying that 
uh, Jin Mori has three major weaknesses and he can't win pretty much that he can't beat him because um, he's he's bad at close combat apparently which I highly doubt he's bad at close combat but I guess compared to Epio um, he's also saying that he takes too much time to get his attacks out it's too much charge time and um, and his attacks do too much to his body right and what Jin does to counteract this is pull a Kakashi where he decides to copy both Mira and, Han and Han's abilities uh, where um where Mira has the ability to use her wind blades, so he decides to use that at, to counteract his weakness against um, close combat. And instead of like having like hard charge time with his abilities, he copies Han's um like fist attacks, uh <laughs> like like his little like random like turtle punch, dragon punch thing. So he copies that. So I'm just like, okay, you're already the Monkey King. Now you can like summon the Sharingan, my boy. But then. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't really have an answer to his third weakness, but it's seen that even though Epio is because it's weird because Epio is a really nice guy, right? Um, and from our background, he knew who Jin was when he was a baby, when Jin Taijin was taking care of him, right? But we learned later that he, um, what Jin Taijin told him when he was little kids that watch out over, watch over Jin Mori and uh, make sure like, you know, you teach him some things when you meet him again. And what we've seen is that he's not fighting to really beat him. You know, he kind of is. He's also trying to teach him on the way. So we're, they pretty much become kind of equals throughout when, like, Jin is learning more and more abilities. And he learns a new Jin uh, special, like a Jin. <laughs> he does this thing like Mori Original or whatever. And they're pretty much equals with Jin getting the slight edge. But the episode ends when he, like, knocks um, Epio away. And then you see the Ninetales. <laughs> Freaking more Naruto references. Last time we had a guy who like shadow clones and now we have um uh kyubi or karama which is his real name and the episode ends with um epio awakening his um uh, charioki which he's like turns into this like <laughs> nine tails chakramo sage mode character <laughs> and then we go on to episode 11. In episode 11, we learn more about um, Epio's like Cherokee, and pretty much the Cherokee is the Nine Tail Fox, right? Um, like, like you know, big Naruto, or whatever. The Grand Naruto, Naruto is not the only one who did that stuff, but we learn that in the God Realm, um, he was like with like God himself or whatever, and I guess God betrayed the Nine Tails, so the Nine Tails destroyed half of heaven. Then came down to to to, to the, the human realm or earth, if you want to say it, and it's in now Epio. I'm guessing because again, this stuff again, these episodes are they're really. Here's the thing about the God of High School, right? The God of High School is extremely well animated. The mocap with like how they're animating stuff is fantastic, like amazing stuff. But man, the storytelling is getting so convoluted now because you can tell that there's so much stuff missing or like that needs to be in here because I'm just like. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, even because I was looking up these characters' names, and then I learned more context. Like, for example, later on in the episode, um, the character that got bodied by the shark dude, uh, J Jigal, um, he like he gets like taken over by this like this choke this karaoke called Greed. Uh, his name is Yon. But the thing is, we would you would never know that by how this episode goes out. You just see Jian just turns into this like this demon creature starts absorbing people. Like you have no context of like whatever is happening, right? But um, with the characters they care about, you kind of get a context. But so with Epio, he is the key to whatever this god stuff is, right? And he starts beating down like Jin, but even though he's low key teaching Jin what to do here, but I really love um, EPO's design here. It's really like a big mixture of like Naruto's like chakra mode and like with a mixture of sage mode, but also looking human with also like with some Inuyasha type ear things going on. I, I like it, but we see though, even though Jin has not unlocked his chari uh, his Chiyoki, he's still able to like tank hits from um, Epio, and we learned that with Epio that he low key can't stay in this form for that long, and he also doesn't even know how he got into this form, which is um pretty interesting. But when the fight is going on, we finally you know we're seeing um we're seeing Mori or Jin Mori like actually like start unlocking his own uh, Chiyoki, and he starts like, like to like recreate the field into like this like like stormy land where it looks like they're outside but they're still inside. And he summons like his pretty much his 
his this karaoke where he's the monkey king but like but even though this is happening we see that uh, epo is using like a hundred demon foxes attack but but he it's like Jin becomes so op that this man just summons a giant monkey king hand and just one shots him which is like incredible really like it's good it's really well animated like here's the thing i think this is probably the best fight in the series so far i don't think it's creative as Jin versus han but overall it's an amazing animated fight it's just that the storytelling is suffering with these episodes because like man i'm i'm loving what i'm looking at but i don't i don't know what the hell is going on <laughs> at all but um Jin ends up beating um epo and um then we see like um the fight between um uh park uh, part Mujin and um and Sang, they pretty much call it a draw because um part Mujin got all bunch of help from his like his his organizations from the six <laughs> Drizzy and from the um the different uh people he has under him like like the uh the, the judges and everything like that to help him but Judge P still like she's still hurt but I guess he doesn't really care but they're saying that they're trying they need the key which is EPO and they decide to let him heal first but while EPO is healing and like you know he's talking to Jin talking about like what happened wondering what happened to uh to his grandpa um they get attacked by the guy I was talking about um who first tries to get revenge on Shark Dude um but it doesn't work out for him and then like his his friend with, like some big ass breasts <laughs> tries to like like calm him down but every like she low-key screwed him over because every time she tried to call him calm him down the freaking jagal just like sneaks attacks him and almost kills him every time she's like the main reason why this guy gets murdered later on but um he comes in he attacks um epo and um and epo and jagal are like kind of teaming up for like a point two seconds before the big breast chick comes in and like hey calm down and of course jagal takes the opportunity to kill them and and while he's doing that um the, um the, the dude with the greed ability he he took he took epo's friends with him and like even though they didn't get killed along with like jagal like like eating him he takes away one of um epo's friends legs and arms which gives him like PTSD of how like how his friend got her leg broken by Jagal as well and, and like in the flashback you know we we know that Jagal got beat like got punched up a lot by EPO back in the day and like while EPO is like enraged Jagal says like hey I know you like you know you you raised out me before but I'm stronger now but regardless it looks like um EPO is going to go back into his nine tail fox mode again and he's about to beat him up again and um <laughs> uh part mujin announces that the god of high school is over so here's the thing about these two episodes right first episode um 10 i think is the better animated episode in here um the storytelling is just again is is i can kind of get what's going on in that episode so i'll give it like again animation wise 10 out of 10 right but in terms of storytelling the pacing and everything and the convoluted i don't know what's going on so I'll give it like a six to seven to the story's telling. So I'll give it like an overall strong seven, right? But then you get to episode 11 where like, you know, we're getting more information about like, you know, um, EPO's uh, uh, Choroki uh, and like how he's the key to like some God ability and like, and they're trying to use him. But then it's like, we have no explanation of like why homie who got attacked by a shark dude before turns into that to that person until you like actually look it up and it's like some greed cherry okay like again there's so much stuff left out that you really need more context for that the story suffers a lot and i, I give the story like a six out of ten because i don't know what's happening it's a lot of stuff missing but overall the animation like I let the fights are pretty good so i'll give it like like a low seven out of ten because just again the animation and just what's happening how much you love the characters really save this but like the, the what's missing in these webtoons is really hurting the story a lot here but again i love the fights i think i really enjoy uh what happened with um uh, with epo versus Jin. i think the fight is different the webtoon i think Jin actually loses because i heard that they hinted at the whole monkey king thing way sooner in this episode but regardless i really enjoy these episodes i think they both even out to like sixes to seven out of tens like again the fighting in like the animation is 10 to 10 like especially episode uh, 10 with the guys drumming amazing stuff but yeah so let me know, the, uh, know what you guys think in the comment section down below if you're a big god high school fan if you're a, a fan of webtoon how do you feel about just the pacing and how much story stuff is like dead ass missing and things are just getting super convoluted but the animation everything like that is still superb 
Um, again, I'm eventually going to watch the webtoon, even though every time I get online, I get low-key spoiled about everything. So, but yeah, man, v more videos going to be coming soon. Just got to focus on some stuff in my, my personal life. I got to get uh, get out the way. Um, I have an Inuyasha list I need to work on that a uh, subscriber helped me out with. If you want to reach out to me, I am mostly on Twitter. I haven't been on my Instagram in a while. And uh, like my mother's birthday, who passed like five years ago, is coming up soon. So I don't know how that's going to be. And I got a lot of stuff going on. Again, I love and appreciate all you guys that support my channel i know like views kind of go down a bit once you have an upload in a while but i appreciate any support i get uh, i've been on youtube for a long time and a lot of people don't have as much like much stuff as i do like yeah i'm not the most popular youtuber but i appreciate anyone who supports me so yeah oh side note if you're if you was looking for more content that you've been missing out on um, you can go to my second channel i uploaded this like this mukbang thing with one of my track teammates you tell me if you like those type of videos and like if it gets popular enough i can either keep uploading on that channel or be more if you want more green screen personality driven videos on this channel let me know but anyway this is the real sun to job peace love you all